Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Today, we will celebrate the memorial of a Dominican saint, Saint Catherine de Ricci. We now begin our celebration. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, God of light and truth, by your grace, Saint Catherine shone forth in her contemplation of the passion of your Son. By the help of her prayers, may we meditate with reverence upon these same mysteries and so come to enjoy their fruits. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Syrac. Like the choice fat of the sacred offerings, so was David in Israel. He made sport of lions as, as though they were kids, and of bears like lambs of the flock. As a youth, he slew the giant and wiped out the people's disgrace. When his hand let fly the sling stone that crushed the pride of Goliath, since he called upon the Most High God who gave strength to his right arm to defeat the skilled warrior and raise up the might of his people. Therefore, the women sang his praises and ascribe to him ten of thousands, and praise him when they blessed the Lord. When he assumed the royal crown, he battled and subdued the enemy on every side. He destroyed the hostile Philistines and shattered their power till our own day. With his every deed, he offered thanks to God the Most High in words of praise. With his whole being, he loved his Maker and daily had his praises sung. He set singers before the altar and by their voices, he made sweet melodies. He added beauty to the feasts and solemnized the seasons of each year so that when the holy name was praised before daybreak, the sanctuary was resound. The Lord forgave him his sins and exalted his strength forever. He conferred on him the rights of royalty and established his throne in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be God, my salvation. Blessed be God, my salvation. 
God's way is a nearing. The promise of the Lord is fire tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in Him. Blessed be God, my salvation. The Lord live, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior. Therefore, will I proclaim you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praise to your name. Blessed be God, my salvation. You who give great victories to your King, and showed kindness to your anointed, to David and his posterity forever. Blessed be God, my salvation. Please stand. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard about Jesus, for his fame had become widespread, and people were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. Herod was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip whom he married. John had said to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. Herodias had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. His own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, Ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? Her mother replied, The head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request, I want you to give me at once, on a platter, the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl, in turn, gave it to her mother. 
When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Hini-imagine ko po kung ano yung epekto nitong gospel na ito habang binabasa nung unang panahon, nung panahon ng mga unang Kristiyano. Ngayon kasi pag naririnig natin, it is something very familiar to us, the story of the beheading of John, hindi ba? And the way we hear it, we listen to it, and parang it's ordinary, we hear it, part of the gospel. But I was imagining, ano kaya yung time nung unang mga Kristiyano, considering na walang television, walang internet, walang, walang visuals, ibig sabihin. This was somehow the very, very cinemas during their time, the stories that they hear. And kung siguro, hini-imagine ko habang binabasa sa kanila to, kung babasehan natin yung tema, baka horror movie itong pinapakinggan natin. Ano? Biluid yun, ang kwento tungkol sa pagpupugot ng ulo. That is something gruesome. Kung i-imagine imagine natin, parang kadiri pakinggan, ano? At hindi lang basta-basta pinagutan ng ulo. Nagdiwang pa ang lahat habang nandun ang ulo sa isang plato. With all the blood that was there, the head of a person was there. Nakakatakot kung i-imagine mo parang nakakatindig balahibo. Hindi ba? But you know what? The irony of it all, my dear brothers and sisters, sabi ko nga kung imagine natin baka parang horror itong kwento na ito. No? Alam nyo yung irony? It seems kasi na yung writer ng gospel natin ngayon is not writing about a horror story. This story is not a horror story. This is not meant to spread fear at takot sa mga tao. Bagamat is an opposite one. You see, the writer of this gospel intended this story to be a comedy. A comedy. Father, paano naging comedy yun? Pugot na ulo, pinugutan ng ulo, naging comedy. Anong naisip ng writer? Anong gusto niyang ipaabot? Paano niya ginawang comedy ang kwento na ito? You see, the intention of the writer of this gospel was this. The message that he wants to send to people is this. That among all those people that were there in that party, King Herod, his courtiers, his military officers, all of the VIPs who were marrying, rejoicing, drinking and everything, dancing and everything, among all of those people that were there, isa lamang ang merong ulo. At yun ay si Juan Bautista. No one else has a head. Only John the Baptist served on a platter. At kapag ka sinabihan ka na wala kang ulo, masakit para sa yun. Pero malamang tinatawanan ka ng iba. <laughs> wala daw siyang ulo. Hindi ba? This is what the writer is saying. Among all of those people, nobody have a head. Only John the Baptist. Only John the Baptist. Ayun, anong ibig sabihin nun? What does this mean to us? Sabi ko nga, pag sinabihan ka ng walang ulo, di ba wala kang... Mm, walang, walang utak? Di ba yun yung ibig sabihin madalas sa atin? Walang utak, walang isip, walang proper na isip. Ibig sabihin... Ang ordinary understanding, mababa ang IQ. Walang ulo yung batang yan. Sayang eh. Kaya medyo mahirap turuan. Uh, Di ba? Naririnig natin yung bagay na yun. Ibig sabihin, he is not someone who is wise. Doesn't possess that wisdom. 
And so the writer of the gospel wants to tell all of us here that the person who has wisdom among all of those who were rejoicing in that event is only John the Baptist. Kasi siya lamang ang may ulo. He is the only wise person there. And so the invitation for all of us is to have a head to be wise. To be wise in life. Ano ibig sabihin ng wisdom na yun, Father? Dapat ba mataas yung IQ ko? IQ ko? Dapat ba pagdating sa mga eksame, talagang perfect exams yun? The way I see it, whenever the scripture would say wisdom or wise, laging bumabalik tayo doon sa, sa scriptures din na sinasabing the beginning, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Ang takot sa Diyos ang panimula ng isang pagiging wise na tao. The fear of the Lord. And so, John the Baptist being a wise person here tells all of us that he has a great fear of God. Merong takot sa Diyos. Which very much shows sa gospel natin na opposite na opposite nga naman talaga sila ng mga tao sa side ni Herod. John who has fear of the Lord kaya nga dahil meron siyang takot sa Diyos, ipinoproklama niya yung katotohanan. Sinasabi niya kay Herod, mali ang ginagawa mo. Yung asawa ng kapatid mo, inasawa mo din. Pakikiapid yan. Because coming from the fear of the Lord, we're talking about the truth. But look at the other side. Natakot ba sa sinabi? No. Continued with what he was doing. There was no fear. So there was no wisdom. When the girl asked her mother, what should I ask for? The head of John the Baptist. That easy. That easy to take a life. Walang takot sa Diyos. Nung nakita ang ulo sa platter, ang lahat ng mga taong nandun nagdiriwang pa. Walang takot sa Diyos. So there is no wisdom there. But only John has the head and was the only wise person on that place. So the invitation, again, have a head. Be wise. Have that fear of the Lord. Father, ano yung takot ng Diyos? Ano ba yun? Paano ba natin malalaman na takot ng Diyos yun? The fear of the Lord is the fear that comes from love. Galing sa pagmamahal. Parang yan, yung pagmamahal ng isang anak, yung takot ng isang anak, nasaktan ang kanyang mga magulang. Kasi mahal niya. Parang yan, takot ng isang asawa na lokohin ang kanyang asawa. Kasi mahal niya. Sana yun yung takot na yun. Hindi takot baka mahuli. Parang yan, takot ng isang government official na ibulsa ang pera ng bayan kasi alam niyang hindi sa kanya. Galing sa pagmamahal. Parang yan yung takot na hindi ka makapagsimba, hindi dahil baka parusahan ako ng Diyos. Pero alam natin, kasi yun ang karapat dapat sa Diyos. Na sa pagmamahal na ibinibigay niya, yung aking kakaunting panahon aking kakaunting effort ay ibibigay ko sa kanya bilang pagmamahal. Yun ang takot sa Diyos. So again, the invitation for us is have a head. Have a wise, become a wise Christian. Have that fear of the Lord. The fear that comes from love. Kaya magandang pagnilay-nilayan sa buhay natin ngayon, sa mga desisyon na ginagawa natin. May ulo ba tayo? 
Are we wise in our decisions in life? Meron bang kasamang takot sa Diyos yan? Takot na galing sa pagmamahal? May ulo ba tayo habang tayo ay naglalakad? <laughs> Nakatakot, Father, isipin. Nakatakot, isipin, ano? Pero hindi ba mas nakakatakot na naglalakad na nga tayo walang ulo at nagtatawanan pa din tayo? Magsitayo po tayong lahat. Our struggle against the forces of evil will be successful to the degree we unite ourselves in prayer. Let us pray to God of truth as we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that the leaders of the church, like St. John, may become courageous proclaimers of the gospel of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may give wholehearted support to the church struggle against those dark forces that enslave men to violence and crime. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as Christians, we may be vocal in our concern against those who exploit and for those who are exploited through political pressure and corrupt practices. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that those who are victims of oppression may finally gain justice, freedom, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffered and died in faith may gain their heavenly reward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in the silence of our hearts, we offer our personal and our particular intentions. And we also pray for the intentions of this Mass. Heavenly Father, your love for us never changes or fades away. Give us the courage to walk in your presence all the days of our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Lord, accept our gifts of bread and wine on this feast of our sister Catherine. Help us now to celebrate the Passion death and resurrection of your son jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is tr truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord we praise and bless you today for St. Catherine de Ricci. 
She walked in the ways of our Holy Father Dominic. You led her into the path of perfection, nourished by Dominican life and by the sacraments of faith, ardent for the salvation of all. Catherine labored with apostolic zeal to lead all women and men into, into the fullness of your truth. Through our celebration, we are inspired to imitate her and are strengthened in our vocation our, as preachers. Now, in company with the saints and angels, we praise you forever. Hold. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis' assistant bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Dominic, Saint Catherine de Ricci, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. 
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold Jesus, 
the Lamb of God, the Son of Mary. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Corpus et Sanguinis Christi custodiat me in vitam eterna. In the body and blood of Christ, blessed are Please all kneel for the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord, from coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us together pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord our God, we have been renewed by a sharing in this divine gift. May we, like our sister Catherine de Ricci, bear in our bodies the suffering of Jesus and strive to live for you alone. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bago po tayo magtapos ng ating misa, ako po ay magpapasalamat sa ating lector commentator, sa ating acolytes and Eucharistic ministers, sa ating choir, at sa inyong lahat po na nakiisa sa misang ito. 
Maraming maraming salamat. Ingat po tayo sa ating pag-uwit na wabawin ninyo pong pagpapala ng ating Panginoong Diyos sa pamamagitan ng ating mahal na ina, ang Birhen ng Santo Rosario ng Manawag. Muli po maraming maraming salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. We all go in peace. Thanks be to we God. We shall now have the prayer for the blessing of the sick and the blessing of our rosaries and other religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness towards our brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oils, and other religious articles, our devotees and pilgrims, be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.